But obviously in the last few hundred years, it's really come a long way in terms of mathematical development. And so it's a very important concept, the way that we use symbols instead of numbers. But in fact, numbers are also just symbols. The reason we have the number six represents six things. I mean, you can have any sort of symbol that represents that. It just happens to be we have that thing that looks like six. Right? So that's just the case, but we use numbers. Generally speaking, we use letters for algebra. Obviously, x, y, and there's common a, b, c, whatever you like. And then you can also use Greek letters for certain instances as well, alpha, beta, omega, epsilon, all these kind of things. Right, so variable x, y, a, b, etc. represent a set of numbers. It can represent a whole set of values. It could be all numbers, or it could be just a limited set. That's the whole idea. And so, Again, you don't really need to write this. We've gone through this before. I just want to touch on it. So the idea of generalized arithmetic, instead of working out the average of three numbers all the time, saying I'll have to add them together, and then okay, this is a very simple example. But we can say that the average x of three numbers is for a, b, and c. Those are the three numbers. x equals a plus b plus c over three for any number a, b, or c. So for any set of numbers, we already know that this is how you work it out. You've been able to generalize, you give a general rule of how it works. Okay, so that's the strength in algebra being able to do this. We're going to have to go over and over again doing it. And again, just quickly, an algebraic expression, expression, Expression that involves algebraic right? So anything that has these things, so 3x plus 4y minus 3. Okay, so that's the strength of algebra. Algebra is a good tool. That you got to see, and I think it helps to see it that way. This is not something that's making things more difficult. It's actually designed to make things easier. And so the sort of difficulties we go through when we're learning it, the conceptual things we have to try to understand, if you push through those and get the basics, later on when we're doing more work with more advanced things, you're able to use these tools that will help. Right? But of course, if you don't understand these basic things, the more we go on, the more difficulty you're going to have. And so these foundational things that we're going to look at, just quickly, you need to be making sure you actually understand. It's not just about answering the questions in the book, but understanding the things that we're doing. So, I'm just going to talk about uh, like terms and all that sort of stuff. So simplifying algebraic expressions. So we can only add or subtract like terms. Hang on, this page you should be very familiar with that. The like terms are terms that have the same combination of variables, and each variable has to have the same power. I would suggest you write this down. So the same power, same combination of variables. That's the exact list. But the thing is, the order doesn't matter. You can have A, B, or you can have B, A. In essence, it's the same thing. And so, we're not interested in the order, we're simply interested that the variables that are multiplied together and are raised to the power are the same variables multiplied together, and each of them has the same power. So that's what we're interested in. So a few examples that we have. X and 2X are like terms, because we have X and X. That's what we've been looking at. We've been looking at this for years. DA, 4DA, and 5AD are like terms. The order is not important. We're simply interested in the combination of the variables. DA or AD, they're, they're still multiplied together, so they're like terms. X squared Y and 6Y X squared are like terms. So again, the order is different, but you've got an X squared and you've got a Y multiplied together and therefore they're like terms, all right? X and X squared are not like terms. Because although they both have the variable X, they're completely different things. And you have to think of it in terms of number. No one would ever say that four is a similar or is like to four squared, because four squared is 16. All right? So you can't say that four plus four squared equals two lots of four. That's not true. Because four plus four squared is not eight, it's pointy, and there's all sorts of complications. So just because the letter is the same, doesn't really mean anything. 
the power has to be the same. Okay, so x and x squared are not like this. x cubed and x squared are not like this. And all these things have to be the, exactly the same power with the same pronoun. 4a and 4ab are not like terms here because the combination is different. So we have to understand that just because they both have a in them, it doesn't mean that we are going to be able to add them together. Four lots of a, you get four lots of a times c, they're very different. Okay, you can't just add them and simplify that same way. You can factorize that as a common factor of 4a, but you cannot simplify by adding or subtracting. Alright? Just a few examples. Now, I also wanted to just make a note here. And this is something that many people, I think, have experienced from last year as well. Many of you had a little bit of trouble with the idea of the symbol that goes with the term. Alright, so if we have something like this 3a minus 2b plus 6a minus 4b. The sign of the number, the sign of the term, it goes together with it. So this one is a positive, you don't write it, but it's plus. This one, the negative goes with the term after it. The positive sign goes with the term after it. And this one, the negative goes with the term after it. So that's important because we can see they've got 3a and 6a. 3a plus 6a, that's 9a. Then we've got minus 2b minus 4b, that's negative 6b. So that's going to equal 9a minus 6b. If we cut out this sign, then some people are going to say, well, it's minus 2b, because we haven't taken into account the fact that this is negative. So this is the way I think about it. You say, well, let's group them. The symbol, the sign, goes with the term after it, and that's the way that we group them together. Okay, so just take note of that. Make sure you're careful with the sign. And this is the time when it's a little bit slower moving that we're able to get it through. Okay, so let's have a look at these examples. Simplify the following expressions. 5x minus 2y plus 3y minus 7x. 5x is a like term with 7x. 2y is like term with 3y. How many lots of x do we have? How many lots of x? Come on. Yeah, we've got negative 2x. We've got 5x minus 7x, so it's minus 2x. When you take away five, 7 from 5, you end up with negative 2. Okay? How many lots of y do we have? Minus 2y plus 3y. How many y do we have? 1. It's just 1. Plus 1. Can I just make another point given this? Just the convention is, when you have an algebraic expression, if it's possible, it's often good to have the first term as a positive. It just looks neat. So, because of that, and you can change the order of these terms any way you like. As long as the sign stays the same with it, I can switch things around. If I have multiple terms, I can switch them around in any order, and my solution is still the same. The order of operations of adding and subtracting doesn't matter within that category. Alright? So I can rewrite this as y minus 2x. That's exactly the same. Okay, so now we're sort of just starting to think about how we present the solutions to things, how we present those things. And it's a little bit of a, a nice sort of neatness thing. Well, so it doesn't matter really. It's not wrong. But I think that just looks kind of neat and more complex. It's much easier to subtract something as a positive and think about adding a positive onto a negative. Okay. So you can rearrange these solutions any way you like, as long as the sign stays the same. You don't even keep the sign. Okay? Any questions? Good. Next one. 6ad squared plus 3ad minus 5b plus 2b squared a minus 3da. Which are like terms? Which are like terms in this expression, Adam? Huh? Um, this one, 2d squared a? Yeah, that's right. So we got 6ad squared plus 2d squared a. How many is that going to be on? Uh, that's 
good. A, A, B squared. All right, what's next? Any like terms, Bryce? Yeah, what do we get when we have 3DA minus 3, so 3AD minus 3DA? What's that? Zero. We don't have to write it. And then we're just left with this one, so we just have 5 minus 5D. Any questions? That understanding of the order doesn't matter. Simply that they're the same combination of proteomerals, same power. Alright? The last one, using an example like this, so this is a general case. This is saying, well, if you have an isosceles triangle, the long side, or the side, two equal sides, one of them is 5x minus y, and then the shorter side is x plus 2y, what's the perimeter of this figure? Okay, in terms of x and y. How do we work out the perimeter of this figure in terms of x and y? What do you have to do when you work out the perimeter of something, isn't it? Yeah. So we have P equals, well, one side is x plus 2y plus one of these sides is 5x minus y. And then what's the other side I have to add in? 5x minus y. Yeah, because there's two lots. I have to 5x minus y. Now I have to simplify this. How many lots of x's do I have? Yeah, so we've got x, we've got positive 5x, we've got positive 5x, so we've got 11x. How many lots of y do I have? Zero. Zero. Yeah, zero. Because what I have is 2y minus y minus y. So it's say plus zero if you like, it just means it's 11x. And that's our perimeter. I mean, any questions about this? Okay, adding the sides up and finding it in terms of the proteome. And then you may need to do some other things. Questions might ask you, if the perimeter is this, and you know one of the sides, find the length of the other side. You have to subtract. Okay. So let's have a go at a few of these questions. So exercise 2.01, question 1 to 4, do A, C, E, every second one. And then question 5 to 8, do all of For those who are finding this uh, very basic, too easy, then I'll, I'll have some extra, not extra work, sorry, I'll have some more sort of typical work or things that further your understanding from tomorrow with the different things that we have. So I'll give that to you. So if you'd like to do that, then I can give you a sheet of something that I prepared. And then if you're not understanding it, if you find that you're still struggling, that's fine. You just need to spend some more time with the earlier questions. Make sure you ask me, go through it, make sure you understand it. Okay?